Today, I'm going to discuss about the shear and moment diagram. First, let's define a shear force. Shear force is basically a force acting on a section of the beam that is perpendicular to its longitudinal axis, while the bending moment is a moment caused by the bending of the beam due to loads. Consider a simply supported beam of length L that carries a uniform load omega throughout its span. In statics, we learn that the reactions of the hinge and roll support here are both omega L over 2. Taking a section at distance x from the left support, we can determine the equivalent shear force and bending moment at that section in terms of x. Again, in statics, if you cut a section on a member, you can either consider the left side or the right side of the member in your analysis. In this case, let us consider the left side of the section. To determine the equivalent shear force at that section, we just sum up all the vertical loads. Starting from the left side, we have V equals omega L over 2. That's positive because the reaction goes upward. Minus the equivalent concentrated load caused by the uniform load, negative omega X. That's negative because the uniform load goes downward. To determine the equivalent bending moment at that section, we just simply multiply the loads we consider in solving for the shear force by its corresponding lever arm or its perpendicular distance from the section. Simplifying the equation, it will become If we get the derivatives of this equation with respect to x, it will be or simply the result is equal to the equation of the shear force. Thus, dm over dx is equal to v. In calculus, we learn that dy over dx is equal to y prime or the slope of a line at certain point. In this case, dm over dx is equal to m prime or the slope of the moment diagram at certain point. Therefore, we can conclude that the slope of the moment diagram at certain point is equal to the shear at that point. That's rule number one. Similarly, if we get the derivatives of this equation of the shear force with respect to x, it will be, or simply, negative omega represents the value of the uniform load in the beam, and dv over dx is the slope of the shear diagram at certain point. Therefore, we can conclude that the slope of the shear diagram at certain point is equal to the uniform load at that point. That's rule number two. To determine the corresponding shear and moment diagram of different types of load, let's have this example. In this example, we have a uniform load, a uniformly varying load or commonly called a triangular load, and a concentrated load represented by the reactions in the beam. The first step in drawing the shear and moment diagram is to solve for the reactions in the beam. Our example is a simply supported beam, so we can just take the summation of moment at B to determine the reaction at A. Taking clockwise as positive and counterclockwise as negative as our sign convention, we can now proceed to summation of moment at B. So we have solving for RAV, we have 22.222 kN. Since the summation of vertical forces equals zero, we can determine RB. Solving for RB, we have 37.778 kN. To make sure that we didn't miss something, let's check if the summation of moment at A is zero. So we have after that, we project the points where there are changes in the load. So starting from the leftmost part of the beam, we have the reaction 22.222 kN, which is a concentrated load that goes upward. So from zero, we just go up by 22.222. In this portion, definitely we have no load, which means zero slope in shear diagram from rule number two. Zero slope is represented by a horizontal line. Now from this point, we just subtract total load caused by the downward uniform load. Since the value of a uniform load is constant, that simply means that the slope in shear diagram is also constant, which indicates a straight line. So, we just connect these two points using a straight line. From this point, we subtract the total load caused by the downward uniformly varying load. 
Since the value of a uniformly varying loan is constantly changing, the slope and shear diagram is also changing constantly, which indicates a parabola or a second degree curve. So, we have to connect these two points using a parabolic curve. But the parabolic curve may look like this or this. For us to be sure, we just have to recall rule number two, which states that the slope of the shear diagram at certain point is equal to the uniform load at that point. So at this point, the value of the uniformly varying load is zero, which means zero slope at the shear diagram. From the projection of that point to the shear diagram, we will just draw a horizontal line that represents a zero slope. Now, the curvature between these two points must be tangent to the horizontal line, so we can say that the slope of the curvature at this point is really equal to zero. Finally, an upward concentrated load of 37.778 that will make the last point equal to zero. Note that if the summation of vertical loads is equal to zero, you will always end up with zero in the shear diagram. What is good about shear and moment diagram is that if you will able to close the value at the end of the shear and moment diagram, you are pretty sure that the diagram is correct. Now for the moment diagram, we will start at zero because we learn in statics that the moment of any hinge or roller support at the extreme end of the beam is zero. One way of determining the value of the moment at certain point is to add the area of the portion of the shear diagram between that point and the previous point to the value of the moment at that previous point. So from zero, we will add the area of this portion of the shear diagram to get the value of the moment at this point. Another way is to manually take a moment at this section. Considering the left side, in this portion, we have a constant value of the shear, that means constant slope in the moment diagram which indicates a straight line. So we will connect these two points by a straight line. Now from 44.444, we will add the area of this portion to get the value of the moment at this point. But we don't know the measurement of the base of this triangle. Applying the ratio and proportion to determine that distance Another way to solve for that distance is to consider the point of zero shear, which is this one. Considering the left side, let x be the distance of the point of zero shear from the hinge support. Solving for x. So, this distance is simply. So, at this point, or taking a moment at this section, in this portion, we have a constantly changing value of the shear. That means constantly changing slope in the moment diagram, which indicates a parabolic curve. But again, to determine the curvature of the parabolic curve, we project the point of zero shear to the moment diagram and draw a horizontal line that represents a zero slope. And the curvature between these two points must be tangent to the horizontal line. So at this point, finally, 48.888 plus the area of this portion, which is a combination of a rectangle and a spandrel. Note that the formula, one third BH for spandrel, only works when one point of the spandrel is either the highest or lowest point of the parabolic curve. In this case, we already proved that this is the highest point of this parabolic curve, considering a zero slope. In this portion, we have a parabolic representation of the shear, which means the moment diagram under that portion indicates a third degree curve. 
In this case, we cannot project the point of zero shear to the moment diagram because if we locate the zero shear of this portion, we are going to extend this line and it will just look like this. Considering this point is the highest point of this parabolic curve. Another option to determine the curvature of the moment diagram is to take note that if the shear is decreasing in the shear diagram, it indicates a hugging curve. On the other hand, if the shear is increasing in the shear diagram, it indicates a sagging curve. In this case, the shear at this portion is decreasing so it indicates a hugging curve. To sum up, a concentrated load will have a zero degree shear diagram and a first degree moment diagram. A uniform load will have a first degree shear diagram and a second degree moment diagram. And a uniformly varying load will have a second degree shear diagram and a third degree moment diagram. So that's it for the shear and moment diagram.